Hi, hope you're a great day. You're watching JFG Entertainment, and for this video, I'm gonna be going over Oliver Hammer's opening weekend and just its first opening week, not just the opening weekend, but the whole week. Of course, I'm coming with this video like a whole week later because I really wanted to wait to see how the legs are gonna hold. And it's holding really, really good. See, I'm gonna go over its opening week and its opening week and the importance of this film and how it's really been a huge hit in the industry, despite Barbie also being a phenomenon. These two movies have really become a phenomenon, so we're gonna go over all that in this video. So yeah, let's get into it. So. Let's start off domestically, and domestically the film opened with $82.5 million, which is amazing, that's a huge opening weekend, way higher than its expected opening weekend, which was at around $52 million, so that's definitely way higher. Now, 26.2% of that opening weekend came from IMAX, where IMAX made $21.1 million for its box office, which is huge, that definitely means that IMAX is a huge part of the business, and it definitely shows you that the film being created for IMAX, the 77 MMM, and like the whole ratio and everything that Christopher and really hyped up and just the way that the film was intended to be seen definitely uh, went to the audiences and the audiences respected that decision from Christopher Nolan and they really wanted to see the IMAX so I think that was a genius move and I can definitely see why IMAX uh, got fully just full off hammer there was no Barbie at all just full off hammer and it makes sense it was meant for our hammer only and I don't think that that's going to change the second weekend I think off hammer is going to have IMAX just for like the next weekends just because it has such a huge demand like I've seen IMAX at least where I live and it sold out for a huge like like a whole at least two more weeks so that's insane so yeah definitely showing you that IMAX is a huge strength of its business and Christopher Nolan really managed to become kind of like this IMAX director which is insane but really cool now this opening weekend is also the biggest Opening weekend for Christopher Nolan, not including the Dark Knight movies. Beating Inception, which made $62.8 million. That was the previous record holder. Well, Offenheimer has officially beaten that by a pretty good margin, $20 million. So yeah, that's pretty good. Definitely a huge upgrade over that. And it also beat John Wick 4's $73.8 million to become the highest R-rated film opening weekend-wise post-pandemic, which is really, really interesting. Uh, the fact that it's the biggest one post-pandemic, I mean, since 2022 now, uh, that's pretty insane. That's pretty cool for this movie. So yeah, this movie is definitely making history. Now, this past Thursday, aka yesterday, but this was probably came out on Saturday, but uh, I'm recording some Friday night, but yesterday on Thursday, the film made $10 million, bigger than any MCU or DCO film Post COVID, with exception of No Way Home, made on uh, the first Thursday of its release, not including like the previews. So that's really, really interesting. The fact that it was able to make more than any MCU movie, in any DC movie, like I said, with exception of No Way Home, which is also a phenomenon. And it's e actually even with Across the Spider Verse, it's making the exact same amount of money, which is very interesting. Um, it's not part of the MCU, which uh, that's why I didn't mention that. But yeah, that's pretty interesting that those are pretty much even when it comes to dailies. That's pretty cool. Now, the film has officially crossed $100 million in just 5 days, yes you hear me right, in just 5 days domestically, which is a huge milestone and more than most movie films have been able to do, especially recently, like Indiana Jones Stars Destiny is doing terrible and The Flash is terrible, like it rarely crossed it, so the fact it's able to do it for 5 days, that's insane. And it currently stands at $127.9 million domestically. That's its domestic total. And that's a super, super strong domestic total. It's definitely going to grow them super, super big. Now, since we're so close to the second weekend, I said time recording this. Currently, the film is expected to only drop 38% for its second weekend, which is a super small drop. Meaning that the film would make... $50.8 million on its second week run, second weekend, which is really interesting because this was actually the original estimated opening weekend of Oppenheimer. So the fact that it's about to make the original estimated opening weekend on its second weekend just speaks to the fact that this film has blown up so much, the Barbara Hammer has grown up so much, the word amount is going crazy around this film, and overall, this film has officially become a phenomenon, and it definitely has a great shot of just reaching those high, high box office numbers that nobody ever expected this film to reach. So yeah, that's super awesome. Alright, now let's move on to the international side of this film. And internationally, the movie made $98 million on its opening weekend. So close to $100 million. It was so close. And that main reason for that is that it didn't open in all the markets. For example, it's not opening in Japan. And there's another other markets that it's not going to open in just because of the matter of the type of movie that it is. Like the bomb, the nuclear bomb. Obviously, Japan doesn't want to get that film. And I don't think the studio wants to lose it in that in that um, country just because you know that's where the nuclear bombs were actually detonated and so on just because it's a very delicate matter so that makes sense but if it would have opened in those markets it definitely would have cost 100 million dollars so it's really crazy that it got so close mm, i feel like that must hurt a little bit now beyond that just thursday it made 15.5 million dollars yes just thursday this past thursday after its opening weekend that's crazy that's so much money now this means that the film has officially made as of right now the total for the international box office 
million dollars that is insane that is huge 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 really big for that it's actually bigger than the semantic side which is very interesting showing that christopher Nolan really has like a global appeal which is really awesome very few directors have that and that this movie for some reason is really captivating the whole world not just the u.s as many people estimated so that's really cool now this film actually got a china release date a lot of people didn't expect it to get a china release date including myself i didn't think it was going to get one but it did it got confirmed and it's going to be releasing on august 30th in china now why is this a big deal well chris Nolan has a huge and i mean huge fan base in china with tenants still being in the top 10 in china for post covid which is crazy top 10 on china and china has made a lot of movies and they've blown up over there so for it to be in the top 10 post covid that definitely means chris Nolan has some sort of like pull in that place i think this one could do really really good business especially considering the hype that it has around it so yeah i expect that movie to blow up even more when it's in china that's gonna be super exciting now what about globally it's full box office well the film made 292.6 million dollars total uh which is huge 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 and currently as i'm recording this video it's definitely gonna um hit 300 million and completely pass it so yeah it's really exciting knowing that it's about to hit or probably already did hit 300 million that's pretty cool and by the end of the second weekend it should pass 400 million so that's also huge it's a huge milestone and in its third weekend, it's about to also pass $100 million, which is insane. So by its third weekend, pass $100 million, that is huge, especially for an R-rated drama. Like, that's a huge, huge deal. Now, it's very rare whenever an R-rated movie even crosses that. And the fact that it's a drama, it's not like a big blockbuster, but it's a drama. That's insane, the fact that this movie is able to do that. Now... A huge part of the success, just like the domestic side, was IMAX. IMAX was a huge part of it by making $35 million of its global opening weekend um, coming from IMAX, which is the equivalent of 20% of its opening weekend. So 20%, one part of its opening weekend came from IMAX. That is huge. And that and it's actually the biggest uh, ever for IMAX in many markets like Mexico, which is insane, and at least top five ever for IMAX in at least 34 countries or markets which is huge that is really awesome so that means that this film definitely blew up in IMAX to a new level a new capacity the only films that are over that are like the biggest films like Endgame and like uh, um, Force Awakens so of course those huge blockbuster completely blown up films but for this table to compete against that in IMAX like that's huge so that's awesome and this mostly comes thanks to the greater word of mouth that the film's success you know you have an A cinema score which is huge 94% on Ryan Tomatoes those scores was super 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 strong so yeah it's definitely amazing amazing word of mouth now another huge reason why this film was a huge hit beyond like the word of mouth being super strong is of course just a great star power we have christopher Nolan as a director which just that in itself carries a huge huge thing but beyond that we have huge stars killian murphy as the lead even though he's not the biggest he's super huge we have robert Downey jr who is huge i mean he's literally the, the main character in the in one of the biggest, arguably the biggest film of all time. I know Avatar technically is, but it got re-released, so I don't know how, it's, it's a tricky mess. But you know, our, the lead and the biggest franchise ever in the world, like that that definitely means something. So yeah, he was the, basically the face of that franchise, and now he's here, that definitely comes with something. And this is his first role in a long, long time, so that definitely comes with something. We have Emily Blunt, another huge star, and overall, like the whole cast is packed. Florence Pugh is really hot right now. Um, What's what's the name? Jack, uh, or what's it called? Jack, Jack Quaid is also pretty hot. And there's a lot, a lot of other actors that just can, you know, Matt Damon just had air and everything. So, you know, all his actors, so the fact that he has so much star power, even though they have very small roles, and for a lot of our characters it doesn't matter because so much star power definitely brought people into this film so that's awesome and of course the barbenheimer hype the kind of you watch both movies in the same day barbie definitely benefited this film and barbie also definitely got benefited from this film because they both kind of got different audiences that usually wouldn't want to see this film to kind of get interested in the other one and that's actually really cool instead of kind of affecting each other they kind of are helping each other so that's a really awesome thing and it's also incredible that this film's doing so good because this film only has a hundred million dollar budget and like i said it's almost a 300 million in fact it is crossing it as and we're talking so i mean since more is has more than tripled its budget already and it's going to keep going and like i said it's ready to make 500 million for it past its third weekend so it's at least going to do five times its budget so this one was definitely profitable and so yeah that's my box office breakdown for this film uh it's full opening week and how 
a huge of a phenomenon this film really is and how it, it has completely blown up like not hard for like using the point or anything but it has officially like actually become a complete blown up a complete phenomenon into uh, the box office so that's awesome it's amazing to see a film like this um a film that usually wouldn't get this big become this big it's really happy and of course it may also have really strong chances to get a lot of oscar wins for sure nominations but i think it could get some pretty strong wins as well so we'll see but yeah tell me in the comments did you watch this film did you enjoy it and are you happy that it's doing so well at the box office as well as are you gonna watch it again to do the barber hammerhead where you watch both films the same day i'm very curious to know about your experience watching this film down in the comments as well as please 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 leave a like and enjoy this video it will be very helpful so please don't forget to leave a like it really helps out and subscribe for all my content including my box office breakdowns not just on this film but also on barbie and sound of freedom and mission impossible and type of stuff subscribe for all our content and yeah that'll be it for this video thanks for watching hope you have a great day and this is your entertainment out